Well, Maryland Governor Wes Moore addressed the economic turmoil from the collapse, saying different parts of the country will feel the impact, not just Baltimore. It's a huge economic impact for the country. The Port of Baltimore uh, is not just impacting Maryland. Uh, if you look at this, we are this this port is responsible for over 51 million tons of foreign cargo. That's the largest in the country. That for everybody who is buying cars, for everybody who is buying farm equipment, we're the largest port in the country that does that. So this is not just impacting Maryland. This is impacting that farmer in Kentucky. It's impacting that auto dealer in Michigan. All right, well, joining us now is Mary Kane, president and CEO of the Maryland Chamber of Commerce. Mary, thank you so much for giving us some of your time. You know, we just heard from Governor Moore there. Talk to us about what this collapse really does mean in, in the short and long term. And I, I do want to zoom out, but first I'd like to focus okay. on, you know, what it means for Baltimore, for Maryland, when it comes to the importance of this port. Well, this port is one of the biggest economic drivers in the state of Maryland. There are 850,000 cars that just come through the port and then are delivered throughout the entire nation. And that's stopping um, between sugar and we also export coal out of the Port of Baltimore. But overall, it's going to cost at least $400 million in tax revenues for the state. And that's just the port itself. But then we also have the revenues from the bridge, which is another $53 million that we're gonna be losing. And unfortunately, Maryland's economy right now is stagnant. Our General Assembly is here in Annapolis right now debating on tax increases and how to fund our budget coming up and this is not going to help that at all. Yeah, it certainly will not. We are talking about, you know, millions of dollars mm -hmm. of impact. You know, Mary, just talk about the, the larger impact, you know, as we zoom out, what about the ripple effects on a larger scale when we are talking, you know, not only nationwide, but mm -hmm. beyond? Well, just the fact that you have taken out a huge piece of the corridor on the East Coast. I mean, that that part of is part of the Baltimore Beltway, which is what takes I-95 down and through. Our trucks cannot go through our tunnels, which is another part of 95. Um, and now they're gonna have to do uh, go around or God help us not go through the city to get to their destinations down South. It is a key um, area in the mid-Atlantic for transport. It certainly is, and, you know, and, and commerce doesn't stop. At least we don't want it That's to right. stop, right? Yeah. Uh, at this point, obviously, we're only about a day and a half removed. But what are some of the short-term fixes? Because, I, you know, in, in your answer right there, you said, you know, hopefully they're not going through the city. But what are mm -hmm. some of the short-term fixes? Because there well, has to and, be a plan. Yeah, and I will tell you, um, right now, you're seeing a lot of people divert. Divert um, any of the ships that they were having coming into the port are now going off to other ports, which is a big loss for Baltimore. But we have sat we sat down immediately yesterday with the governor's office, with Department of Commerce, Department of Transportation, all our businesses to say, okay, we need to get our act together and we've got to get this fixed. There shouldn't be anything in our way to get this bridge up and going again. Get that get the um, the Patapsco River cleaned up because you can't move traffic in and out of there until you get that all the bridge out of there. And that's what's been hampering some of the rescue efforts too, because right. there is so much steel now um, laying in the river. Yeah, yeah, certainly just a mess. Mm -hmm. Mary, were you pleased with what we heard from the president? We are awaiting a White House <laughs> update to, today, but were you pleased by what you heard from him yesterday as far as the federal government stepping in to try to help and, and get this uh, back in place? Actually, that's the only way it's gonna happen. It really is. I mean, they have the resources, they have the teams, the Army Corps of Engineers is gonna have to come in, evaluate the entire site. We gotta get all that steel out of there before we even start rebuilding the bridge. And we've gotta get our port traffic going again. So it is going to take the breadth of the federal government to help us get this done. And do you think this tragedy will bring about some changes when it comes to how port traffic is managed overall? Well, I don't think the port. I don't think the port did anything wrong. I think there was a bad ship that had issues. I, I have to say, our first responders are amazing people. They had already sent to a number of the hospitals in town in our shock trauma that they were expecting massive casualties 
it is awful what happened to those six wonderful men who fell or died in this in this collapse. However, it could have been so much worse if we didn't have our first responders and our police officers on either side of the bridge that were able to stop the traffic. Oh. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.